welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a tutorial. We haven't done one of, done one of these in a while. Um, we are going to do tea boxes today and some crazy tea boxes because uh, that's kind of what I like to do on some of my courses. Basically, um, on one of the last videos, I brought up uh, the point that it's like, I don't really know what tutorials to do. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And uh, at here for living 1188 uh, asked me a question, um, on that, uh, I think it was from the YouTube video on a comment on how to create a hole on that video. He asked, well, how did, how did you, uh, put that T box in that trunk? And I was completely stumped. Um, there's your dad joke, by the way, for the day. That's a good one. Uh, so I didn't know what he was talking about, but then he got back to me. He's like, um, you, there was one T box where you, where you put it in a tree trunk, and I remember, oh, he's talking about EP's Crossing. So, today I figured we would go to EP's Crossing again and show uh, here for living 1188 exactly how I did that T box, and then maybe we'll just do another one on EP's Crossing, uh, kind of figure out when we get there. So, we'll go to uh, published courses here, go to EP's Crossing, and uh, haven't thought it out too much, but we'll we'll basically get a look at what he was talking about. So he was talking about this tee box right here. It's a weird one. It's probably like 250 feet up. You can see here. Um, we got the tee box up here, and it's actually inside one of the fallen tree trunks, and it's got uh, stairs going up there. It's actually to this green over here. Um, but from the hole before that to make it walkable, basically, um, I basically had a weird idea to put a tee box inside a giant tree. <laughs> and uh, it was a crazy idea, and I don't know if it makes all that much sense, but I tried it, and then it kind of worked, so we just went with it. Um, but yeah, the idea was, um, there's a part of five here. What I thought was cool was, there's a little walkway that you need for later, but basically you come over this way. If you're walking the course, you use this nice little bridge here. You, you hit your Eagle right there. Then, uh, you hit your Eagle putt and you get right back on this bridge, but then you take this way up and it essentially spirals the staircase all the way up, uh, this tree trunk until you get to this T box. And this is the one that he was curious on how I did. Um, also, the the spiral staircasing and these walkways weren't perfect. And the reason why is because when you're working with any objects and you're up this high, it's just so every little movement on the joystick just goes sporadic and it's hard to place anything. So if you are placing something this high, just know it's going to take you forever and it's going to be really frustrating. Um, and also to like, no one will probably ever see this unless you do like a tutorial showing people how to do it. <laughs> uh, but you'll know it's there. So you'll want to do a little, a little extra details, but yeah, it's a little sloppy. Um, if you get up close, but one thing I wanted to point out was I also put, um, bushes around the tee box and kind of under it. And why I did that was it, it kind of gave it more scenery, but it hid a lot of the junk I didn't want you to see. Because when you raise up land that far, like a small strip of land, like a tee box, when you raise it that high, it creates this really stupid looking crap that just looks awful. And you, you're going to want to hide it with objects. And so here I hit it with a, a few different bushes. Um, God, I want to hide these awful staircases, but... It, it technically made the course walkable, so we're going to stick with it. Um, anyway, so we're going to build one of these tee boxes today, and we're going to show him how to do this. So we just need to find a place to build it, first of all. Um, you know what? There's a good spot. Let's So we don't have to build a, uh, like a complete hole. Let's use one of our other greens that we have on EP's Crossing already. And let's build one where we have available land. Uh, oh, first thing I got to do. Sorry, guys. I should have done this beforehand. I wasn't even thinking. Uh, every course I do, it's at the max for object meter. So I need to erase some stuff to add anything. 
Um, so we're going to have to erase. I'm going to always erase waterfalls if you need more um, need more data. That's quick, easy way to get yourself a lot of data. At the same time, yeah, don't build a lot of waterfalls if you don't have a lot of data. Uh, let's high falls. Let's get rid of that. Okay, now we're down to 98%, so we should be good to build whatever we're going to build here. Um, so let's take a look at this green. Um, let's get the measuring stick out. Let's go. Let's just see how far it is. I figured right here would be a decent spot because it wouldn't mess up really much of anything anywhere. I guess none of this really matters. We're just doing it for a tutorial, but I'm thinking if I was doing this for real, this is probably what I would do. Um, so that's about right there. So it's about 225. That's not bad. Okay, so first thing we do when we want to build a really high tee box um, is we get out the landscaping tool, landscape flatten, and we go over to the fifth page. Since we're doing a tee box, we're going to grab this circle. And this, the circle and this square, these two uh, shapes I use a lot when I have to do really precise stuff, when I'm bringing stuff up um, long ways in the air. These are perfect. You got to use them. Um, so I'm going to roughly, okay, let's choose it. I'm going to roughly see what the size of a T is. That's kind of what, where we need. And we're going to grab where we hit the mark here. And we're just going to raise it up. Um, maybe like, I don't know. Let's see what would be too high. Yeah, let's go 250. Why not? And then looking at it, I think I need to make it a little bit bigger just so that T's can fit there. Let's uh, hit A, see what it's like. Okay. Is that going to be big enough for a T? I think it might. You know what? Just to be safe, I'm just looking at it. I don't think a T would fit there. So we'll undo that. We'll go back to zero. Um, we're going to roughly look at this shape again. Go down to zero. I want a kind of base to know like how how big I need this area. And then I'm gonna go a little bit bigger than I than I need it because as you're dragging it up, um, you're getting less and less usable land. If you can see here, I'll try to show you from different angles so you know what I'm talking about. But as you stretch this land, less of it's usable, and we're going up pretty high here, so. Let's go 250. I'm even going to make it just a little bit bigger by pressing up. I'm making this circle bigger. There. Now I know we have more than enough land. Even that's... So now I'm going to hit A. So now we have... Oh, and of course it planted a tree there. So what we're going to do next is clear generated objects. And we will clear this tree off that it made for us. Because we don't need that in our lives. Oh, I guess the other thing I needed to do, too. We already have 18 holes, so I need to erase a hole. Let's erase this hole. So to, to erase a hole, I don't know if you guys will ever need this, but um, kind of go to the settings of that hole. Hole 4 settings. And we are going to delete hole. So now we can make a hole. Um, I don't know. No one will probably ever need to do that, but now you know. Um, okay, so now we have a nice flat spot up here. This looks good to work with. Um, so now we are going to create a hole. We're going to go right where that measurement spot is because it seems sort of in the middle. And let's use the pin one. The it seems like it'd be the best pin for this make a tutorial on hit a it's going to be a par three so i hit a twice so it doesn't have a waypoint and oh one other thing too since we have multiple t's i didn't even think about this since we have multiple t's we got to go down here and we got to hit it we got to move this t up here with us and if you're gonna make crazy weird um t boxes like this 
unless you make multiple, you're, you're essentially just going to have to put uh, your T's right next to each other. So it's almost like there aren't multiple T's. Um, theoretically, you could uh, like build another one of these like over here. So it came from a different angle or like over here or like a longer one. So you, you could build like one of these for each T if you wanted to. Uh, for this, we're just going to set them right next to each other. So now that we have that, let's let's take a look at like what it looks like, what our hole looks like. Okay, so we're up here. So the good news is I was worried that we'd be too high that we wouldn't be able to see our green, but we are we are perfect. We can see everything we need to see. Um so and then let's check if it's flat. Yep, we're completely flat. So we are good so far on this tee box. I'm sure it plays well too. I don't need to play it right now. We're gonna go back to creating this tee box. Um, so if you can see here, when this land is stretched like this, it just looks awful. So you got to cover it with something. And that's essentially why we're, we're doing the, the tree trunk. Cause it's something I thought of originally for this course and, uh, it worked. So we are going to do it. So where is the tree trunk? It's nature. It's, I think it's plants. We'll go to placed. I've placed it. So we'll do fallen tree. And did I pick it? I did, I'll erase that. So now we're gonna press up and we're gonna make it almost as big as we can. Then the issue with this too, I'll, I'll explain. So um, I'm gonna make this as big as I possibly can just to start out. We're not gonna need this big, but I'm just gonna show you guys something. So that's as big as it can go. Now we're gonna drop it as far as we can go. So that's the issue you run into. That's as far as the game will let me drop it. So unless you want to make a tee box that high, what you're going to have to do is shrink it until it gets down to the size that you want. And since we want the best views we can from this weird tee box, we're going to keep shrinking it down because we don't want... I don't want this thing to be too high on either side because it, it ruins all the views. Like you want to see all these views from all these angles. So you don't really want it all that high. So we're going to have to keep shrinking it. Maybe we'll bring it up a little bit. You want it. So that, that's one thing. So you want the views to be open um, from the tee box when you're playing. But at the same time, you want to cover this because all the other holes that you're playing around, you, we need to cover this. So it's kind of a balancing act that you're trying to do. So for this, I'm going to bring it out about here. Then we have to think about the tee shot too. Is this going to ruin our, our uh, side of the line here? And I think it will. So we're going to turn it slightly. And we're going to just nudge it right up against there. Because uh, when we're placing this now, we're really thinking about is anything in the way of our shot? Because that's the most important thing. So we have that there. Let's just place it. Let's do the same thing on the other side. So that may, so we have the back open a little bit. So I know a lot of the camera angles, um, when, you know, like between shots or whatever, when your caddy's fucking, when it's showing your caddy and stuff, it's showing different angles of the course. So this one, I'm going to drop a little lower. And because I want to open that view a little bit. So we're going to make it smaller and lower. Yeah, so now we got a somewhat open view. Uh, but now we have to worry about the rest of this ugly looking stuff. And what we're going to do is um, just add kind of multiple trees to kind of cover it. But we're, we want to do this in a way that doesn't look weird, which can be tough. We are gonna have to make this smaller. So what we're trying to do now is we're we're just covering all this stupid looking land the best we can without making it look weird. Um, I'm noticing now on this one that we made today, like it's quite a I used quite a bit more land than I did on the other one I built for the actual course because I just wanted to make sure we had enough to get uh, to make the tee box big enough and straight enough to for it to work um originally on this court i spent a lot of time on this tee box getting it right it took a lot of trial and error so we're just covering up all this uh stupid looking land because it looks awful 
because we're thinking about the rest of the chorus as we go by this. We we want it to look um, want it to look good, you know. We want our courses, all our we want everything to look good from all angles on our courses. That's really what we're going for. We don't want anything to stand out as weird looking. Okay, so we'll kind of scroll around here. I think we covered all the weird looking land. Nope. We missed some down here. So I'm making this smaller. There we go. It was just a little spot, but it would have bugged me if it was there. Okay. Okay, so this one looks a little different than the one I did originally, but um, I don't think it looks bad. Well, I mean, it looks bad right there. So now, now I'm just covering as, as many spots as I can of this weird stuff Ooh, and making sure that this is not in the way. We cannot have that in the way at all. We really, really care about our, uh, our sight lines, and that would have definitely been in the way. Um, okay. So let's just take a look around here. Yeah, it looks like a decent tee box. Now the next thing I would do, I'm trying to think, what did I, what did I do over on this one? I would try and try to find some way basically to hide this, this patch of land right here that you see, even though no one may ever see it ever, we still know it's there. So we want to cover it and I would probably use like bushes of some sort. Um, I think I used grass on the real one. Yeah, I used like a bunch of grass under there. So let's do that. Why not? There we go. We used one piece of grass on this uh, on this course. And I think it was just for that too. So we're just going to enlarge this as much as we can. And we're going to try to cover up our, our weird looking land that we had to raise up out of nowhere. Of course, this looks weird in its own right, but I'd rather have this kind of weird grass up here than um, than the stretched land. I think the stretched land just looks awful. And so we're just going around and we're making sure that it's not in the way of our sight lines at all. Add some here. And let's see, we don't want any right there. Yeah, that looks fine. Um, and then two to spruce it up. I think what I did was um, where did I put? Yeah, just kind of put some stuff around here because you you don't want anyone to be able to see kind of this. This is what we're trying to avoid. That area between the stretched land and um, and the edge of our tree trunk there. And plus one of the things I always like to do and I think encourage everyone to do is really decorate all the area around your tee boxes as much as possible from all angles because that's one of the places on your course that people are gonna be seeing the most. Like you know no matter what, they will be at the tee box. So definitely put some more time into decorating that. Okay, so we got a little decoration here. And, of course, uh, we're not going to do it on this tutorial, but we would have to build a staircase, a spiral staircase up here, or come up with some other uh, crazy idea to make this walkable. So this would be, we wouldn't do any planning here because we're going to need some sort of, like, bridge or steps here. But I think for this tutorial, this should be enough to uh, kind of get you started on a, a crazy tree trunk uh, tee box. Let's uh, let's give it a play. See how she looks. Why not? We went through the trouble of making it. Um, yeah, play hole eighteen. Let's give her a look. Okay, so we didn't get uh, really in the way of our sightlines too much at all. It's actually pretty normal par three, relatively. Shouldn't be too hard. Maybe a uh, well, it's not normal. It's ninety two feet down, but normal for me. I like to do crazy part threes like this. So I'd say that's roughly a uh, seven iron. Let's see how seven iron treats us here. A little fast. Uh, I missed it. It's not going to go down the hill.
Never mind. There, barely caught that hill. Let's take a, a look here for the, how it actually looks when we're playing. Does it look weird, the tee box we just built? Um, yeah, it looks a little weird, but not, not weird in a bad way. It, it works, I think. Um, let's go back to the course I didn't see. And so this, um, I'm trying to sum it up and like generalize what we did here. This can work for like any tee box you want to make. But essentially, you just grab either that circle or that square on page uh, five, bring it up, and then um, just cover it with as much as you can. Just you want to cover that stretched land. So that's kind of how you do it. Um, it's also a lot of trial and error, and you know, it, uh, I think the one that I built over here looks a bit different. Um, but yeah, I spent a lot of time on it. A lot more than what we just spent on on this one um um but yeah so i think that does it for um this tutorial about t boxes um if you guys have any other questions at all um uh, about any other stuff stuff you've seen on my course or just bunkers or you know fairway any kind of thing about uh designing let me know and i'll make a video about it all right thanks guys adios